Hi everyone, my name is Mateus, and today we're going to talk about video games. Twitch is cutting how much its biggest streamers earn from subscriptions. Right now, the majority of partnered streamers receive a 50-50 revenue share on subscriptions to their channel. That means 50% of net revenue goes to Twitch, while 50% goes to the streamer themselves. However, Twitch has negotiated premium subscription terms with some bigger streamers that give them a 70-30 revenue split, and that split is what's going to change. Under the new policy, streamers with premium terms will keep 70% of their subscription revenue on the first $100,000 earned. But after that, the share will go down to a 50-50 split. The changes kick into effect on June 1, 2023, and even then only when a streamer's contract with Twitch is up for renewal, according to a blog post from Twitch president Dan Clancy. The $100,000 threshold will be calculated over a 12-month period beginning from a streamer's annual agreement renewal date, Samantha Fought, Twitch's head of communications for the Americas, said in a statement to The Verge. It will reset on the first day of the subsequent 12-month period, and each 12-month period thereafter. About 90% of streamers with Twitch's premium terms won't be affected by the change at their current revenue, Clancy says. But for those worried about losing money, Clancy argues that Twitch's recent ad revenue share increase to a 55-45 split is a great way for these larger streamers to make up most if not all, of that revenue. The change to the subscription revenue split could anger some of Twitch's top streamers, but as of late, it seems like Twitch hasn't been as interested in catering to that group of creators as it was in the past. The company has lost popular streamers like Ludwig, Myth, and Lily Piku to exclusive deals with YouTube, but despite those big names moving elsewhere, Twitch is still where more people watch live streams by a wide margin. Following Rockstar's GTA 6 leaks, a fellow Take-Two brand is facing a security threat. 2K Games took to Twitter to put out a warning message. One of the company's customer support help desks was hacked and malicious links were sent to certain players. Please do not open any emails or click on any links that you receive from the 2K Games support account. 2K said. If you have already clicked on a suspicious link, 2K recommends that you reset passwords stored in web browsers, enable multi-factor authentication, run an antivirus program, and check account settings to see if any forwarding rules have been newly added. 2K additionally stated that it will never ask for your password or personal info. The support portal will remain offline until the security issue is resolved, and 2K will notify players when it will become available for use again. It's unknown as of this time who or what organization is behind the 2K security breach. Rockstar notably suffered a security breach recently too, but not on the customer-facing side. The hacker group, allegedly lapses dollar who Uber claims is also responsible for its security breach released GTA 6 development footage. PlayStation has released a new promo trailer for the upcoming PlayStation VR 2 that shows off the specifications of the device as well as footage from video games like Horizon Call of the Mountain and Resident Evil Village. More specifically, the promo video specifically hypes up the upcoming headset's 4K HDR display, eye-tracking technology that follows the player's vision, foveated rendering, 110-degree field of view, and more. Some of it is specifically noted as not being actual gameplay, but the vast majority seems to be pulled from actual PSVR 2 titles set to release for the new hardware. Gearbox has called the release of Borderlands spin-off Tiny Tina's Wonderlands a great victory for the studio, saying its success means it, now clearly, has, a new franchise on its hands, with more, experiences, already in development. That's according to Gearbox Software CEO Randy Pitchford, speaking during Embracer Group's annual general meeting, described Tiny Tina's Wonderlands as a major victory for the developer. Wonderlands shattered all of our target expectations, both critically and commercially, 
Pitchford elaborated, and I'm thrilled to report that in addition to great financial rewards from this victory that will be coming our way in the coming quarters, we have established a firm beachhead. Pitchford said Wonderland success meant, we now clearly have a new franchise on our hands, and confirmed that, future experiences, are, already under development at Gearbox. Whether these, experiences, are DLC for the existing game or full-fat follow-ups of some sort remains to be seen. EA Sports has officially confirmed that Ted Lasso and fictional club AFC Richmond will be a part of FIFA 23. You'll be able to select Jason Sudeikis' beloved Ted Lasso character as a usable manager in career mode, and AFC Richmond will be playable in career mode, kickoff, online friendlies, and online seasons. EA adds that, a number of AFC Richmond items including kits, typhos, manager items, and other content will also be available to unlock across FIFA Ultimate Team and Pro Clubs where applicable. As you'd expect, Richmond won't be a part of the Premier League in kickoff, online friendlies, and online seasons and will instead be located in the rest of the world section. Players Roy Kent, Jamie Tart, Sam Avisanya and Danny Rojas will all be in the squad, and fictional stadium Nelson Road, will also be part of the game. Embracer co-founder Lars Wingefors has spoken to investors about the release of Saints Row, admitting he had hoped the game would have received a greater reception. Wingefors, whose company owns Saints Row developer Volition, acknowledged that views on the series reboot had been polarized following its bug-laced release. There are a lot of things that could be said and details around it. I'm happy to see a lot of gamers and fans happy. At the same time I'm a bit sad to see fans also not happy, Lars told investors. Wingefors stated that a variety of fixes and new content for Saints Row will be released, and noted these should still see Embracer turn a profit. I'm confident we will make money on the investment. Would it have, been, as great a return of investment that we have seen in many other games? Not very likely, but we will make money and that's a good starting point, he said, before stating this project had been, one of the harder ones, in Embracer's growing catalog. When questioned on how this release will impact any future Saints Row games, Winchfor stated, obviously you always want every installment of any IP to be greater than the last one, but what you do is, evaluate your position, the outcome, and there, are, hundreds of people engaged in this game in the group. I still have a great trust in those people, and I am sure they will recommend things for the future. September's Xbox update is out now with color-changing Xbox button, revamped library, and more. The new update launches today, September 21st, and Xbox has made it easier for you to access your games and apps with a revamp to your library. The full library view has been streamlined to show you all the games you have access to install and play, as well as an all games section which will include games you can play through any subscriptions you have, like Game Pass, EA Access, and games with gold. The new Xbox Elite Wireless Controller Series 2, Core in White is now available too, and with this latest update you'll be able to change the Xbox button color on any Series 2 Elite controller. You can do so in the Xbox Accessories app on your Xbox console or PC, as long as your controller is connected. There are more options for your storage now too as you can now choose different installation locations for your games and apps on Xbox Series XS and Xbox One consoles. For example, you can let your Xbox decide where optimized for Xbox Series XS games will go, you can choose to install backward compatible games on an external hard drive, and put apps on internal storage. Xbox Game Bar has a new option to get a shareable link for any captures of your game you take on PC. You can do so via SMS, WhatsApp, Twitter, Messenger, and more, and if your settings are public then anyone will be able to check out your captures. Party chat noise suppression has now rolled out to Xbox One and Windows 11 10 PCs, so if you're using party chat, you'll hopefully notice less unwanted noises and interruptions, like gamepad clicks, breathing, and background noise.
Setting up parties is easier now too, as the Xbox mobile app has a start party option, making it easy to jump right into the game with your friends. Dark Souls 3's PC servers are currently offline due to an unspecified problem which is being investigated. At this time, there is a confirmed issue with Dark Souls 3 online play via the Steam platform, reads a message published on the game's official Twitter account on Wednesday. We are investigating the source of the problem and will inform you as soon as more details become available. Thank you for your patience. While the nature of the issue is unclear, the latest downtime represents a blow for series fans who have had to make do without online servers for most of 2022. The PvP servers for the PC versions of Dark Souls, Remastered, Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3 were deactivated in January following the discovery of a severe remote code execution vulnerability, which was said to allow abusers to take control of other players' computers. Dark Souls 3's PC servers were finally brought back online in late August. We are working to restore these features for all other Dark Souls titles and will inform you when they are back in service, read a message published on the Dark Souls Twitter account at the time. That's all the news for today, Wednesday, September 21, 2022. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. The links to all the subjects discussed in this video are available in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.